Hello everyone, how are you? I am Taryn and this is Just Like You, Everyday People, Amazing Stories. It's Tuesday at a little before 7.30. I'm coming on a little early today so my guests can get on and get situated. We do normally start at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So it is almost 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time here in Chicago. Again, I am Taryn and this is Just Like You, Everyday People, Amazing Stories. We are here every Tuesday and here's Crystal right now. We are here every Tuesday. I'm gonna let Crystal in here. Crystal, let's see. So we are here everyone every Tuesday 7 30 p.m. Crystal. Hello. Hi, sunshine. Happy Tuesday. How are you? You look great. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. So do you. Your lips are popping. Oh, thank you. I That's put a little something, something on for yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> I can see there. It's beautiful. So I'm just going thank over you. a couple of quick housekeeping issues. <laughs> we are here, everyone, every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for Just Like You, Everyday People, Amazing Stories. The goal of the show is really just to share stories. We, I've realized um, through my own story that we all have an amazing story. We all have an amazing story to tell. And we all have positivity to give and love to give. So that's what this show is about. No story is too big. No story is too small. We all can share, we all have a journey, and we all can learn from each other. So I just invite guests on every Tuesday to share their story, to share their lessons, to share their advice. And you guys, the audience, get to ask questions. And so if you have a story, or hi, May, May. If you have a story or know someone who does, I'd love to have you too, May, May. Um, if you have a story or know someone who does have a story, this is what it's about. It's about positivity, sharing your story, sharing love, no stories too big, no stories too small. And if you have a story or would like to be a guest on the show, please private message me and, uh, or tag someone who does have a story. So, hey girl. So today I have my friend Crystal, Crystal Galladay, and she has an amazing story. She is a mom. She's an entrepreneur. She's a business owner. She has her own show as well. So I don't want to give it all away, but just, uh, you know, just someone who has a great positive story to share. And that's what this is about. So again, let's see, are we at 7.30? Yeah, we're almost at 7.30 here. So we'll go ahead and get started. But again, Crystal, thank you so much for coming on the show. You listened to the show first, and then um, I really appreciate your just willingness to come in and share your story and, and tell everyone about your journey. So let's get started here these first 10 minutes or so and just share share your story, girl. Share, share what you got. No problem. For starters, thanks for having me. I really appreciate the invitation. And I want to thank Kyrie for introducing us uh, when her brother yes. was on. I found out about this outlet and I love what you're doing and I love your story. Thank you. I look forward to you being on my show. But for me... Yes. I am a city girl. I was born in New York, the Bronx to be exact, in a northeast part called Co-op City, Section 5. And I grew up with both, both of my parents in my life, but I did have an extended family or a blended family. And my parents worked hard. So they gave mm -hmm. me the example of go to school, go to work, work for a company and retire. And it was like, that was cool. But um, throughout my academics, it was a matter of me not doing so great in elementary school where my reading score was low, I stuttered, and I had an event where a first grade teacher made fun of me. Now, oh, no. that situation, yes, like it stuck with me decades later, and it helped me to learn how to turn a negative into a positive because I had so many people so seeds in me, not that first grade teacher, but more or less my mom, um, a program that I was a part of called Youth Activities Committee, which had programs seven days a week, even Saturday morning, there was a tutorial program where I did math, which is my favorite subject. And my dad really sowed seeds into giving me real life examples with that. But then also there was creative writing and reading that we did that helped out. I took speech therapy and things of that nature. And just my mom always like being there, putting in the sweat equity and chaperoning mm -hmm. trips 
things of that nature to make sure if I start something, I finish it. So I got okay. that mentality her. And just both of them being, you know, hard workers. So for me, being behind in a lower reading score and stuttering and being shy on top of that, I, you know, wasn't the best student coming up in elementary mm -hmm. school, but mm -hmm. I realized that in order for me to learn, to get to where I want to get to and learning from people's experiences, the good, bad, and different, I had to sow seeds into my education and um, okay. really take the time and take the energy to do what I need to do. Because my parents always told me, school is your job. You don't have to worry about all this other stuff. You go to school, you get good grades. And yeah, they rewarded me. Some people mm -hmm. may have said I'm spoiled, but hey, I did what I was supposed to do as a child. School so, was your job. <laughs> yeah, that was my job, going to school, getting good grades. And that's that's what I did over time because I applied myself and I had the tools with me um, along the way. So mm -hmm. by the time I came to junior high school, there was a program called Exceptionally Gifted. And people tested into that. They placed me into it. Like, oh years in um mm -hmm. so that was a testament of my hard work paying off then oh by the mm -hmm. way i decided to not go to public school for high school i wanted to go to private school and when i went to private school i was already advanced so that really clicked in me there's nothing wrong with public school it was just a choice that i didn't want to stay in it and you know with my prince which i didn't know i was having a child down the line i did want to i knew that you know public school is okay so that's why I'm very active in my community, a youth advocate as well, and also on a board for a charter school here in D.C. And when I graduated high school, I was not the valedictorian or salutatorian. I was a cool nerd, by the way. Joined the second <laughs> freshman year in the Brainiac Clubs. I was a future business seat of America on the exec board for National Honor Society, math tutor, love science. But I spoke at graduation for our high school. I got the most awards. Wow. Full academic scholarship that paid for my tuition and housing and another scholarship. And not only that, went to school for free for undergrad, but then got my other two degrees for free while I was working full time through other funding sources and other organizations so in season to me. So with that, my lesson in life and to show others is that you could do anything that you put your mind to. Mm -hmm. You have to put in the work. And know mm. that if something doesn't happen for you right when you want it to happen, it's okay. It may be a no, not right now, or it may be, that's not for you. Right. And, you know, we may get our feelings in the way sometimes, but right. it's okay to not always have things go as planned. Because it's not your ultimate life plan that's laid out for you. So that, that was at a pretty um, young age. So you're just, you know, that you learned that put in the work. You overcame that, um, you know, I guess, I don't know if I would say adversity, but you overcame your challenge, you know, even as a young woman um, before, you know, a lot of your stuff that we're going to talk about got started, you were already overcoming this adversity. So you put in the work, you started putting in your work early. But I think I put it in in the work because that's what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always I believed in myself. Mm -hmm. Other people, okay. At times more than I believe in myself. And I feel like it wasn't until maybe my 30s that I really okay. started believing okay. in me and knowing that I have it going on. And, <laughs> I, I, and I can do anything I put my mind to and I tell my prince that that he could do anything he puts his mind to. But I've had self-doubt growing mm -hmm. up. I, I experienced, you know, colorism, just a whole lot of other different things that came into play that my self-esteem, while I got things done, you know, would speak or be a leader here and there, it, sometimes it was inside, like, really, you going to do this? Oh, <laughs> and, okay. Yeah, so it was that inner voice that took time to be more confident. And okay. say, yes, I'm going to do it. Not, Ooh, are you going to do it? Yes, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do okay. it well. <laughs> so so tell us, so continue your journey. Continue your journey for us. Tell us so, kind of, you know, after that. So with college, I failed a, a, a class freshman year, which it was definitely, a, I chose the hardest major. I chose engineering. So okay. with that, 
okay, I failed, but then I didn't let that stop me. Mm -hmm. Still able to keep my scholarships. I just failed one class, ended up graduating, ended up being able to get on a dean's list by the time I graduated college. And I joined the sorority. Uh, um, in the sorority, I'm also doing other things mm -hmm. that for the community, but then also other extracurricular activities. And I graduate. And guess what? I'm the only African-American female to graduate in my major. And this is the early 2000s. Oh, wow. I, wow. I, to this day, I'm like, really? And I know yeah. I was in a field, but even when I joined corporate America, I was the one of many different categories. Female, mm -hmm. African-American, you know, all, name it, you name it. And even now, people look at me being a, a corporate exec uh, and also in a nonprofit and an exec and a founder for my own nonprofit. People are like, really? You? Like, you look so young. And I'm like, yes, mm -hmm. you could do it. Like, anybody could do anything. And age shouldn't be a factor. It's a matter of what you're capable of doing. So mm -hmm. with, high, with college, graduated. And it's funny because a company that ended up recruiting me, like, I'm talking about flew me out for an interview. Two days later, my, my family had a store in New York. We went to the Magic Convention in Vegas. I'm in Vegas in a hotel room with my dad, and he, and the company calls me. It's like, oh, we want to hire you, and this is your salary. And my dad is like, I worked all my life for that salary. Say yes, mm -hmm. girl. And I'm like, but daddy, like, I want to negotiate. This is not what I thought. And, he, right. and to know that he worked all his life, for the point that I was at and the sweat e equity that him, my mm -hmm. mom, and the village that helped raise me mm -hmm. put into that moment, it was like, okay. Like, it was, I was doing it for them, but I was also doing it for myself and the younger generation because I tried to mm -hmm. lead by example. I'm not perfect, even though some people may think that, oh, Crystal, like, yeah. I'm not perfect. It's me being me, and I'm in competition with me versus me. That's it. Because it's a lot of like facades you may see that people put on and right. going scroll social media, you may compare yourself. And I try not to do that, even though your mind sometimes wants or yes. but I just have to remind myself it's you versus you, Crystal. And I just try to be a better me than I was yesterday. Right. And then so I got recruited for that company that always had long lines at the career fairs but i never applied for them and two days later after the interview i got flown uh i they relocated me um because i got the job worked mm -hmm. for them for a couple of years then before i know it, another company found me and i've been working with the firm that i'm working with now for 14 years wow i've worked with another company in between but they're not as as, a, as mm -hmm. instrumental in my life and while I was at the first company, I found out about opportunities on like companies to finance you to go to school. So I did that. I took a gap year and I'm like, hmm, I want to do more because computer engineering, sitting behind a computer, that's not totally me. I had the full scholarship mm -hmm. to stick with engineering. It's cool. I have it in my toolbox, but I want to expand on the business side. So I took a gap year, what they call it, between going to school mm -hmm. one year and, and I went back to graduate school and worked full time while pursuing my dual master's degree. Okay. Wow. 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 Mm -hmm. That's that's a lot. Yes. And then like now after working several years, and I work for a consulting firm, I've seen different avenues of the business and I know like with my parents passing and I got married, I was single while working, wanted to travel. My husband found me and mm -hmm. We decided to get married, got married, had my prince. And I realized, like, with my parents passing, and life is short. So I wanted to stop putting my all into other people and mm -hmm. into my dreams and bridge my dreams into reality. So that's when I started my nonprofit called Never Underestimate Knowledge. I founded that. And I wrote my first book. And I'm just doing, you know, at, I wouldn't say a lot, but it is kind of a lot. It is a lot. It, it, it's a, it's when you're saying it, I'm like, you know, like you said before, you put in that, that's why I said, like, I was kind of looked up there for a minute and was like, wow, okay. You know, it's a lot, but I think that you're, you know, um, one, one term my husband uses a lot uh, is you're built for it, right? 
this is, you're built for it. You, like you said, no, I'm going to do it. I'm confident. I'm going to do it. And these are the things that, you know, you, you sound like you have a North star that's pointing you. So while it sounds like a lot, you're, you're built for it. This is, this is what you're here for. So, you know, I think that that runs hand in hand with, with what you're, well, what you're doing, how you're serving. So sounds like you're enjoying it too. So go ahead. I am, but I've learned the power of no. Wow, I used that's to, a good one too. That's a good one. I used to be like, oh, you want me to do this? Okay. Or I'll just do it because I know I can get it done quicker and faster and I don't have to spend the time and teach it somebody else. But I've learned over time, a true leader knows their strengths and knows when they need to ask for help and knows to outsource things. So the for power me, of no. I, yes, I have not been saying yes to everything. Mm -hmm. I've been outsourcing something, even though I know I can save some time right now, mm -hmm. but in the long run, I'm saving myself time because your time is your most valuable asset. Mm -hmm. You don't want to keep doing all these things. And yes, it's leading you towards your goal, but at the same time, you can have someone else focusing on the, I wouldn't say mundane, but the task that someone else can do and you can be the strategic and, mm -hmm. you know, Face and you know implementing the things so i just learned a lot along the way you you like to um you kind of like to fly i always say you know there's some people that like to fly at the twenty thousand foot view and there's somebody who likes to, who has to fly at the fifty thousand foot view right who has to kind of look out look over like you said and be more the the strategizer if you will so i think that's good that you've kind of you know taken yourself it sounds like you've taken yourself from that twenty thousand foot view and put yourself now at that 50,000 foot view to be more of a, a strategizer and fly, fly at that, you know, a different level, if you will. And um, taking some time distance from my end. Because mm -hmm. I like That's, to be at the 20,000 view. <laughs> I do too. I like to be at that 20,000 foot view too. I mean, I, that's something that I like. I'm in sales and um, I love to be on the ground. I love to be on the, uh, you know, at the forefront on the ground. But, you know, it's also, like I said, important for me to make sure I understand that 50,000 foot view as well. So we're about uh, 10 minutes in here. So let's go to our next question. And, and you started it a little bit earlier, but that is the three lessons um, that you've learned along this journey here. Um, you know, I know you started talking about some of them, but are, are there more that three things that you've maybe written down or have in your mind that if someone else is kind of in your same predicament, what you know three lessons that you learned and and next we'll talk about three lessons that you would tell someone else so either of those two okay so the lessons that i've learned is it's okay to not be okay it's so, okay to not be okay your well-being is paramount because as you you heard you can't pour from an empty cup so for me when my parents passed away my dad's situation when he passed was different from five years later when my mom passed away my dad passed away. I ended up being hospitalized for dehydration because I was trying to be the, oh, the strong one, oh, to keep going. And oh, by the way, I was pregnant, but only like my mom, my dad, and my husband knew. Mm -hmm. Everyone else found out after I was hospitalized. So mm -hmm. with that, if you can't burn the candle from both ends, you have to take care of yourselves. And then when my mom passed away, I'm her only child. I'm my dad's oldest of three. So I did even, I had help with my dad. I'm the oldest of his three, but I felt like I had to be strong and be there and go, yes, I need to do this. I need to take care of that. With my mom, I, my sister was there for me, mm -hmm. but it was still kind of like I am the one to take care of everything from healthcare proxy. So with that, I've learned that. Oh, we froze up. Oh, we froze okay. up just a little bit there. I don't know if you can let everyone know if, if you if we freeze or do anything, we, we're just gonna keep going. We're keeping going with it. So 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 what I was saying was there's a difference when my dad passed and when my mom passed. When my dad passed, I was trying to burn the candles on both ends. Yeah. I was trying to do everything. When my mom passed, I had to do everything, but I knew what were to me to just to make the best decision but then also I took my time for me some people were upset but the vision came to how everyone um appreciated it and it celebrated her 
learned that through grieving a parents at a five year increment that it's okay to not be okay. And I had grief counseling for my mom. My dad, I didn't. And I do therapy every week. I, I believe in your whole wellness package, your mind, body, spirit, and my little one oh, and I yeah. at night. Um, and I do work out and he works out with me sometimes. He loves burpees. I don't really like burpees. Uh, <laughs> I know you can relate. To the <laughs> but the second lesson is protect your zen. Um, protect your, say it one more time. Protect your zen. Protect your peace. Like, zen. namaste. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have negative Nancys and negative Normans mm -hmm. around because there will be those energy vampires sucking your energy out of you. Mm -hmm. So, there you first. And you see how the first two lessons kind of tie into each other, but it's very important. Mm -hmm. You have to do that because in order to achieve your goals, and my third lesson is believe in yourself, um, you have to be well in order to be able to do that. So someone's giving you thumbs up in hearts. Uh, ben, Ben there, ben. thumbs up in hearts. Yeah, that's a good one. Believe in yourself. Yep. Because for me, it was backwards for me. Like back in the day, mm -hmm. I didn't believe in myself. I was shy. Others believed in me more than I believed in myself. And I teach my prince now. He knows I can do anything I put my mind to it. And mm -hmm. I think his book bag may even say that. Like, you can do anything. And people are always like, oh, wow, that book bag. And it's a constant reminder for him, but also for me, mm -hmm. too. Because this motherhood and this life as an adult is is, is hard sometimes. <laughs> so those are the three lessons. I, I, um, I like the one. I like that it's okay to not be okay. Um I also am a big proponent of, and I, and I also am a big proponent of therapy, like, um, because I, you know, I've just, I've been in it for a while and I go back every so often when necessary. It's like, I mean, I take care of my car, right? I, I give it a tune up. I give everything a tune up. I, I need to give my mental space a tune up too, you know? And, you know, there's all things that we're all carrying. It doesn't matter who you are, what age you are, we're all carrying something. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of it um myself so but it's okay to not be okay is i like that one because sometimes we don't we think that it's not okay to not be okay you know and i think it's important to give ourselves permission to sometimes just you know not be okay so i i, I think that's a you know that's a big one and and believing in yourself but i think you're right you can't sometimes i don't know if you could do one without the other or i don't know if i can let me just speak for myself you know, I couldn't not give myself permission to know that it's okay to be not be okay and believe in myself at the same time. You know, I don't know. So I think that's a good one. I Thank like that one. Thank you. And I try to really think of like something that's applicable to people, but keeping it simple. Like you don't always have to make things complex in life. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. oh, you act like lessons or words that I wanted to share. As I mentioned, you know, sometimes you compete with other people. Uh, maybe not like I'm competing with you right now, but I want people to remember to do your best and forget the rest. Like you should mm -hmm. only be in competition with yourself, being better than what you were yesterday. And that's mm -hmm. what I kind of remind myself. What are your goals, Crystal? What do you want to do next? And then you work towards that and have like your blinders on. So do your best and forget the rest. Um, the second one will be, you can do anything you put your mind to. And I, and I, anything. I truly believe mm -hmm. that. Granted, you know, you, you may have to reach out to people to get some, some help some places, but if it goes back to believing in yourself, if you believe in yourself, like some of these people who are out here mm -hmm. doing things, they believed in themselves and they took the appropriate steps. They had the sweat equity and they made it happen. So that would be the second thing. You could do anything you put your mind to. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, lessons of words that you asked me about was, if someone says no, it's not the end of the world. Like, it could be a no, not right now. Or no, it's not meant for you. And either one is okay. The yes. life you go, meant for you is meant for you. So we got Chrissy Chris 0703. I don't know if that's a 0703, like July 03 or and the 703. I know, I know the 703 as well. So, um, but Chrissy Chris says, yes, you can. So, you. you know, you can, you, 
you can do anything you put your mind to. You know, it gives me, um, it reminds me, and I kind of told you this a little bit, um, and if viewers have been watching since the beginning, but if, if they haven't, just give them this little glimpse, even about this show, when I did it, um, it I started to kind of, I, knew, I had a plan for it when I lived in LA, and it was going to be a magazine, and magazines have kind of since gone by the wayside, but I just say all that to say, when I was thinking about starting this Instagram live show, and you and I have kind of talked about this too, even with Inst I didn't even know how to work Instagram live. I was like pushing buttons and, you know, stuff was going everywhere. And, um, you know, I just said, you know what, I'm going to try it. And even with the show now, I'm like, I know sometimes it freezes up. I know sometimes stuff happens, but I just keep it going, you know, and I just believe that I could. And um, I don't even know if I said this at the beginning, but you kicked off the double digit episode today. So this is episode 10. And I had no, my husband said right before I walked up, he's like, man, this isn't so, this is going pretty good for something you didn't know what was going to happen, you know? And it's so true. So I think that that's a big one as well. You know, you can put any, you can do anything you put your mind to and you just kind of have to step out there sometimes. And, and even if you, you know, try it and, and it doesn't go the way you say it's going to go, you know, that's not always, you know, that's a lesson learned too. It's not a, a bad lesson. It's always just something, right? So, you know, I think those were really good ones and they all tie back into to keeping your, to, I think keeping your Zen, if you remember all those, you know, if you remember the, the points that you said and you can stay on task with the advice you've given, I think it helps, you know, to keep your Zen um, because it's anything can get it off, off, off whack or out of whack at any given time. So any more advice that you would give to someone else? um, out there that, you know, you've learned. I told some young analysts that I was training recently and my interns in prior years that your network is your net worth. Like, mm. yes, you can learn everything in school and stuff like that. And I truly believe in education, but sometimes it takes that person, you know, to get your foot in the door. So Always continually grow your network, continue to nourish it, and don't just reach out to people when you need them. But your network is your net worth. It's, yeah. You definitely want to keep that network and that synergy going. And I know some people look like networking like, ugh, like I don't want to do it, or it's kind of like a faux pas kind of term to some people, but you have to do it to survive, like for real, for right. real. <laughs> so that's you what do. I was saying. And I, I love, um, I, I guess I have a love hate. Net. I understand that love hate uh, relationship. Like I said, I'm in sales, so I'm a good networker. Um, but I also, like you said, you know, you got to keep consistently networking. You know, it's something you have to con keep consistently doing. So tell us a little, um, a little more about. We got about. Let's see. I got about seven more minutes. Believe it or not. So this has been a great conversation. A little bit about what the future holds for Crystal. What's the future look like? I you want. Got to have my book in every home so with my book is teaching people about you know you don't have to use your finances to go to school there's money out there because mm -hmm. with me college degrees I share my journey as well as steps people could take as well as tips and I have little like self-guiding questions and resources that people could use in the back of my book and I'm expanding my services so I want to have my book in every home and I'm doing it in different languages and expanding it in the reach for that. I want to obtain contracts with schools, even down to the middle school level, high school and collegiate level. I want to do international speaking engagements. I'm doing different speaking engagements virtually now and I get paid to travel too. Mm -hmm. um, and from my speaking engagements and I want my nonprofit to be able to effortlessly provide resources to inner city youth mm -hmm. as well as domestic violence survivors and overall I just want to be happy with my loved ones that's people in my family what I call my friends and family mm -hmm. and continually creating great memories together because that's what it's all about and those are the things that I remember like I talked about my parents passing those are the things that I remember like I even posted today about my dad and him playing music Saturday morning and taking me to concerts and stuff like that so those are the things that I thought of, like, initially when it comes to the future for me. I want to just be free to be able to do what I want to do time-wise, effort-wise, mm -hmm. and continually give back. Because when people act, you know how you have an icebreaker when they say, what is that adjective 
that starts with the first letter of your name, mm -hmm. I always choose caring, Karen Crystal, because I'm always the type that I will look out for others or like I want to be able to make sure that I can, people's goals are achieved. And even at work, like people ask, well, what's your ideal role? I want to help people to be able to improve their operations, achieve their goals, and just be happier in the situations they're in. And that's in the work with my corporate hat, my nonprofit hat, and in life. But I also have mm -hmm. to remember to take care of Crystal first, because if I don't mm -hmm. take care of I can't take care of anyone else. So that's why I'm working on my happiness and my zen and all of that. <laughs> and I want to so, live by a beach, too. <laughs> what, was it, what was that? I want to live by a beach, but or at least have oh. a beach house. We're working on that someday, one day, maybe soon. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I'm, um, I was, I'm in Chicago now, but, you know, like I said, moved from Los Angeles, and sometimes I miss having the ocean. We have, we have what they call a beach here. It's um, the Lake Michigan, but mm -hmm. uh, I miss the, the, you know, the ocean. I miss the ocean. So hopefully one day I'll, I'll get back to the ocean, or at least uh, my husband and I can have a home near the ocean somewhere, you know, and, and still have our home here in Chicago. Maybe we'll be so neighbors. And I'd be yes, <laughs> yes. I, I just think all your 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 points have been so I guess um, self aware. I guess maybe it's, that's what I want to say. I, I I've said this before in other episodes. I'm reading this book, or I finished the book actually by Carla Harris called "Expect to Win." Mm. And one of the things is some of the things she talks about is similar to some of the things you're talking about uh, today. And the last point you kind of made was, you know, whether it's in corporate America, whether it's in your nonprofit, whether it's in your personal life, you know, all those goals point to, like I've said it before, point to your North Star. And it sounds like, you know, they're all, you want them all and they are starting to or have been aligned. And I think that just... Uh, I keep coming back to this Zen thing because I think I'm going to hold on to that. That's what I'm going to hold on to keep my Zen. But I think that helps us to keep our peace and to believe in ourselves when we have a North Star that everything aligns to, right? She talks about in the book where your personal, if you keep this North Star, then it's okay, like you said, to say no, no to things that don't align with your North Star. And you kind of said that too, that it's okay. You're learning to say no on things that don't align with Crystal. And we get so caught up in wanting to say yes because we think we need to say yes to everything. And you're telling us, and Carla Harris told us, you know, it's okay to say no. It's okay to not be okay. And just, just recognize those times. So I think that is um, one of the, somebody, uh, Justin uh, is on here and he's clapping at that because I do think he, you know, he agrees with you as well. And I know Justin, so I know he agrees with keeping your, keeping your Zen. So final thoughts we have, let's see here. We have two more minutes. So your final two thoughts, Crystal, maybe where people can maybe find you or, you know, what, what's the last few things you want people to know? Well, um, my website is simple. It's my name, www.crystalgalladay.com. You can keep up with me on all social media sites. I'm really active here on Instagram as well as Facebook. And then um, if you're interested in getting my book, I do have it. It's um, on the site, on the shop link. And my nonprofit information is there too. And I'm having a fundraiser next year. But the simple words I want to leave people is go get it. One of my favorite inspirational songs go by me. Go get it. Yes. Go get your blessing. Share your gifts with the world. Don't hold back. Go get it. And that's it. Thanks go for having me. Drop the mic. Go get it. <laughs> mic drop the mic. Episode. I'm so proud of you and happy for you. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it. Like I said, uh, just thank you. First of all, thank you for being on the show, Crystal. I know we're going to stay in touch because we have so many other things, uh, you know, to talk about. So, and I definitely will have to, you know, have you back at the first of the year and, and give us a, give us a follow up. But I really appreciate you, you know, I appreciate you listening. And then, like you said, I appreciate Kyrie connecting us. And I just appreciate your willingness to come and, and to share your knowledge on the show. I think you dropped some really good pearls. 
that we can all, especially during this time, but any time, take. You know, I think if those things are, are imperative to, like I said, being self-aware. And I think a lot of us, yes, my husband put a <laughs> drop in my <laughs> um, Yeah. So I just really appreciate your time. We'll, we'll definitely reconnect. And again, everyone, this is Just Like You, Everyday People, Amazing Stories. We're here Tuesdays, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard time. If you have a story or know someone who does, please reach out to me. I would love, love, love to have you on the show. And we just completed episode number 10. So I know, I know I'm so excited. So I'm so excited, Crystal. I will definitely follow up with you and everyone have a great rest of the week. Thank you, Christy Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye everyone. Bye. Thank you.